Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola podcast. This is podcast number 180, and hope the topics won't be too weighty. I am your host and podcast commander, Joseph Martin, joined by... I'm Blue Rider, and I am Light. I am John Rizzi. I am the exact opposite of Light. Heavy. Well, then you can't be on the podcast, because I very specifically said that thing about not being too weighty. So, sorry, John. This has been the most offensive episode not- of the Game Cola podcast. Thank you, everyone, for ju- tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one who said you were weighty. You were heavy. Like, that wasn't coming from me. And you still- and it's just because of the words you still fall through just like with the, the weight whole- discrimination. I know. I get it. I just- This is like the vegan thing all over again. We're also John by Jetty. To- what? <laughs> okay. I was really so hoping the- he would jump on- Here's the so real good. problem. Here's the real problem that's plaguing our society. Video games. Where are the video games? Where are they? Where do they go? Where do they come from, Cotton Knight? We can't find them. Yeah. It's... Now that's insensitive. Um, <laughs> no, where are the video games, though? Like, I can't think of, like, the video games. Now. I must confess, are I, I collected them all. Yeah, I uh, finished my collection. They're all on my shelf. No, no one else can just, have them. They really want to make more Mega Man, right? They want to. I've, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure that's the case. Um, <laughs> d- demonstrably, um, but they I, said I they hopes. did. I have hopes. I mean, they did say. Well, no, a guy asked, like, "Are you going to make more Mega Man games?" And they said, "We might make more Mega Man games." We're thinking no, about. I it. thought they said uh, something about. Wanting one, like, at a consistent rate, more frequently. I don't think that's really... I. It felt... It was like at an investor meeting or something, and it felt kind of just like a deflection of... Someone asked us directly about Mega Man. Let's say the thing that won't hurt our profits as much as possible. I think they're still probably in collection land. Um, I think best case scenario is they're working on... Uh, Mega Man Legends Legacy Collection, which would be good to exist. Legacy Collection like of that games, three games? Yeah, I mean, but like three PS... One games, yeah. One, the PS1, is it PS1? Yeah, PS1, and the first one's yeah. also on N64. I mean, like, that's that's not unheard of. That's like, I mean, wasn't that the... I mean, to be fair, like, Crash Bandicoot was, like, remastered three yeah. video games. Well, like, but even still, yeah, but like... Will they call it a Legacy Collection, or will they just call it a Trilogy? I would I call it like a leg- I think they would call it a legacy collection just for the bound, just for the branding mm, yeah. sake at this point. Um, yeah. like, their only other option because they did the GBA games on Nintendo Switch Online, or the, sorry, the Game Boy games, not the Game Boy Advance games. Um, so, like, there's not really the the only other option is like Star Force, which is a pretty deep cut. Legends was definitely more well known than Star Force. Um, <laughs> Mega Man, the rest of them, Legacy Collection. <laughs> yeah, that, or like a miscellaneous. That's the that's the sort of other option that you could get. But like, right. I I really don't think they're going to do Star Force before Legends. I mean, Legends had like a had a presence. Battle Network before Legends makes sense from kind of like a sales data because Battle Network definitely had like the second biggest impact. And that was not direct and was not directly tied to like the clear through line of the classic series, like, you know, classic X zero ZX, like there's kind of a through line and a, a similar game style through all those. Um, but the fact that they're willing to do it for battle network makes me think that a legends collection is fairly likely. And it also feels like legends is a, a series that would most benefit from like an official release on modern platforms. Yeah, Cause last time it got released um, was on PS3, right? Yeah. And so like, it's just, it's a game that's hard to get. And like, if we're kind of, you know, looking behind the curtain a little bit, it's also uh, games that are probably uh, the most difficult of the series to play. If you do not own them, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess like some of the, uh, I guess com- like, they're the X games, like the later X games that could maybe fall into that category. But also, like, those are also the X games that people don't particularly want to play. <laughs> also, so. that, also, those are available in 
X Legacy Collection. Right, no, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, the X Legacy Collection covers for that, but also, like, the the demand that they're meeting is not quite the same as Legends, because the fancy, late Mega Man X games are not the ones that people are particularly clamoring for at any given moment. Mm. They're the bad ones, John. (laughs) You want me to spell it out for you? They bad. Don't like them. Um, Boo-boo. Yeah, no, it's um, it's been a slow month for video game releases for like new stuff. Like last thing I remember, like people going nuts for was um, the Elden Ring DLC, and for, as far as I know, people are still talking about that. Yeah, and it feels like we they've been kind of on that for a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I I guess we're just like you know we're coming up on big game season, right? We tried to coin this last year. We'll keep trying it. <laughs> but like, you know, the this sort of mid to late fall to early December period where all the, the like big games kind of get announced mm-hmm. uh, in preparation for the fake awards that happen at near the end <laughs> of the year. But not after all the video games have come out, guys. So not like our real awards that we just had. Um, Oddly enough, there so are like, no games released um, scheduled to release in December this year at all so far i mean i'm sure there's like indie stuff but like in terms of big releases there's like this is i mean it's usually like the first week of december that it would happen right um and i feel like also as we've gotten there there's kind of like a splitting of games it almost feels like we're like you know you've got like a lot of indie games and then you still got like a lot of the big heavy hitters but maybe a lot more of those mid-tier games that would be like studios but not first party studios you know like the kind of games that filled up libraries like the ps2 right like who made knack (laughs) who made ty the tasmanian tiger um you know what i mean made siren games like that (laughs) stuff like that right um i feel like if if people with visions like that tend to go more indie into a space where like and also because there's the indie space you can like keep the budget of the game and the price sort of aligned. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if you're releasing a game on, you know, the GameCube or the PS2, like there's certain levels of price expectation, right? Where if you make your game too cheap, people will assume that it's not a good game. I think like there's a, there's a, there's a boundary there, right? Yeah. Um, Like if you're thinking about that time period where like, if you saw a $10 GameCube game or PS2 game, in the you know early to mid two thousands, you'd be like, "That's a bad video game. <laughs> no one wants that." Yeah, it's like twenty dollars games get got immediately uh, classified as shovelware at the time. Yeah, either shovelware or like like I did get Yoshi's Island Game Boy Advance for twenty dollars, but like that's it's a remake of an SS, SNES yeah, game, that makes right? Sense. Like, and also I think a Game Boy game was like forty dollars. I think it was thirty five. So. Actually. 35 to 40 was kind of the range. So it wasn't that much cheaper, um, right? That would be more like $30 yeah. for a console game. So, mm. like, it's – I think that also kind of – like, you don't have to be part of a studio for your game to come out. So you don't have to, like, try to meet this minimum bar of studio quality. And it kind of feels like we've got, like, the big releases and then indie stuff that is just kind of on PC and – Sometimes also you can download it onto a console. You know what comes out this month? Um, Is... Squirrel with a gun. I mean, probably that one too. <laughs> but I was thinking of Emio, which got Dang. a pretty big among the yeah, and, uh, yeah. So got a good amount of coverage. Yeah, for like a week, and then it was revealed what it was, and we went, everyone, everyone but me went, oh. <laughs> We got, but I mean, it's still impressive. Like um, a new entry in the Famicom Detective Club series—that's incredible for like th- for even though the remakes came out recently and did decently well out uh, worldwide. But the um, it's cool that they just made another one, and it's also Nintendo's first M-rated game that they developed in house, or at least a subsidiary developed in house at Nintendo, which is it's insane. Also- like a. Wasn't there like a picture, a take pictures video game that was like sort of Nintendo and they're like, we brought it back. Take pictures in a scary video game. Fatal Frame? Fatal Frame? Yeah. That, they published that. They didn't develop it. It was developed by Tech Okay. 
Okay. Then uh, Pokemon Snap Scare. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Zombie Snap. <laughs> I play that. <laughs> that would be my favorite Pokemon game by default. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah so no, uh, MBO looks cool. Um, I it's weird that they just dropped that trailer out of nowhere and got so much buzz, and then everyone else went like, "Oh, it's a detective game." It's like not nah, as cool. Like as much as I would like it to have been like a condemned like like game from Nintendo, mm-hmm. as awesome as that would have been, it's like this is um, a very um, Nintendo way to make like a, a scary game. I'd say you don't. I'm interested. <laughs> In the way the, like, creator was talking about it, and how it's gonna be, like, his magnum opus, and also he's excited for everyone to find the ending very controversial. So Ooh. Either great or terrible, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah. But he's, it sounds like he's gonna go for a big swing, whether it's a hit or a miss remains to be seen. Same. when is this coming out? Uh, August 29th. Yeah. Okay, so still a while. Yeah, a we while. Still, got, still got a a good amount of the month left. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Depending on when you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> and then Star Wars Outlaws comes out the next day, so I can't wait for Emio to have a spotlight for exactly 24 hours. <laughs> Are people big on that? Uh, like, it's like, it, how are we? It looks, it's like a Star kind of Wars game place. that is getting released instead of canceled. It's going to be pretty big. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, like, generally, I feel like we're in a weird place with Star Wars as a society right now that I feel like might affect the video game space as well. It's I understand a, yeah. that, like, there's there's the, the amount of TV shows is not the same as people playing video games like that is not a similar comparison but i could still feel like there's just so much like i'm not even following it directly and yet i'm aware of so much star wars stuff right now honestly that's (laughs) and i'm not even paying attention exactly it's like it's so exhausting for for people to like follow in or, or like and it's exhausting for people who aren't following it because that's all they see because that's all that's recommended on social media stuff it's like oh Here's the biggest pop culture phenomenon. It's still going. Here's people still talking about it. And the people that just happen to be talking about it are the majority complaining about stuff. But yeah, going back to the game. Yeah, it's not even a quality (laughs) thing. It's just like amount. Yeah. It's just so much. It's just so much. But um, Um, as for the game itself, I mean, it looks good. It's a Ubisoft game, though. And that's, I think that's what most people are like on the fence about because it's okay. Because Avatar came out last year and it was essentially just Far Cry in on Pandora or in the Avatar world. And which was neat, but it still had the shortcomings of a generic open world Ubisoft game. And Ubisoft has not had a good track record this year because they had, they finally released Skull and Bones this year after years of development <laughs> hell and to um a uh, uh what a fart of a success as you would call that <laughs> but it was a tr- a quadruple a game yeah because the amount of time and money that was put into it <laughs> by accident i'm sure that when they first developed that <laughs> came up with a concept they were probably they had no idea it would like take that long how many a's are we going to get to like, how many A's can you say before it just stops beating things? Quintuple A. <laughs> uh. Yeah, they won't say the one for six. That'll be too much. Yeah. <laughs> no no game company will say the number for six <laughs> yeah. the, of something. Like, people might try it, but it won't It won't get through the corporate lingo the way that, like, triple A can. Um, so, yeah, I guess I guess five is the limit. I guess it, it depends on your lung capacity. Hey, uh, hey, hey, how you do it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a triple A yeah. game. I will say one game I am personally looking forward to: uh, the next Astrobot game. Oh yeah, that's soon. Which because like when was the last time we had a solid 3D platformer like full fledged, full price? That was tri- triple A developed. Four. I mean, when was the last time we had a sequel to a launch tech demo? 
Also, mm. I know the answer to this. Wii question. Sports Resort. It's Wii Sports Resort. Dang. Well, I no, it's Wii one Play. two switch. I don't know if you count Wii Play on. No, that. Wii Play one was a retail switch release. Two. It wasn't. A, it wasn't. A oh yeah, there's yeah, there's one two switch two. Uh-huh. That's correct. That's also right. I'm so smart. I did it. You know what else has I'm a two packets. and is a game that is happening? Hmm? No. no, I believe no. Go, no. go, go on. <laughs> okay. Silent, <laughs> Silent Hill two. Oh uh, yeah, that is, is coming in out October. And I'm happy it's coming out in October. Because it's spooky. Is that yes. why? That's it. <laughs> I think we've, we've, so it sounds like we found all the video games. Yeah. We didn't know where they were for a little bit, but we found them. I found them. them. It's just they're coming we've, in we've small ways. We've talked about every one of them. There are <laughs> we talked no about them. every single but here, video game. But here's the thing, though. The fact that we had to jog our memories and look up stuff and like to talk about it's like no we just remembered naturally (laughs) can can i make my point please (laughs) no it's the fact that we just had to like jog our memories about this like when so when we're excited for a game like someone asks us hey what are you looking forward to it should be like a knee-jerk reaction like oh i'm looking forward to silent hill i'm looking forward to star wars i'm looking forward to mario and luigi or or whatnot that should have been a knee-jerk reaction but no, it's like the, we've been so, I want to say not even oversaturated, but it's like, there's so like not much excitement for all these games coming out because there's always like some kind of lingering shadow of doubt these days when it comes to even AAA games. That just doesn't make us too excited anymore. Well, it's, like, like it could just an idea that it's there's no like safe bet, like there's no game that's definitely going to be good. Yeah. Is that what you kind of? Yeah, mean? pretty much. I don't know if it's just the fact that we're getting older and we're be- and because of this, we're adults now. It's like we've been burned, so- or the fact that we've been burned so many times on stuff. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you're finally an adult. <laughs> John finally confirms it. <laughs> I was my, no, my joke was going to be maybe you're getting older. Uh, my back does I, my no, back does I hurt. Said anything about so that. if <laughs> if there was a Marvel Rivals release date, I would know it, but there's not yet. So. I mean, do you have a vibe? Surely there's a vibe of like when this is going to be publicly available. I mean, before like we got game like we got to play the game, I would have said like I don't know sometime before twenty twenty six probably. But now that like, we've had the alpha, and that was a lot more polished than I expected, and then we have the closed beta that's going on right now, and that, like, was back-to-back. That that doesn't lead, like, you've got either, like, another open, or another closed beta next, or the open beta next, I assume, and then probably release after that, so it might even be, like, before the end of the year. So that's pretty crazy. But I, I assume sometime in 2025 is still the more reasonable bet, but it's a lot further along than I thought. They're, they're adding like new characters to the demo and new maps and stuff too, and they still have a whole bunch more that they haven't shown. So it's going to be a big launch whenever it's ready. Yeah, it's it seems so far like the I, I don't know if it will, but it seems like the contender that will finally have the opportunity to really like take over the space of Overwatch, because I feel like we're really at a point where people who play Overwatch really just want to play a new video game, <laughs> but none of them have been able to satisfy the same. None of them have been worth the cost of like learning a new game yeah. you know mm-hmm. and i feel like the just the brand power of marvel might be enough to kind of carry it over that hump even if it is basically the exact same video game from what i yeah. hear in a lot of ways and sony's trying to capitalize um, that on too with uh concord that's coming out later this month and yeah then, but that one's 60 dollars Exactly. Yeah, I it's... think I I just feel like the name recognition of Marvel Rivals is really like not even a quality thing, just like yeah. having some way to stick in your mind among all the other Overwatch uh 
not clones, right? But like people who saw Overwatch and said, "Oh, let me get a slice of that action," yeah. right? I mean, like, there is there's also that it is breathing like fresh air into the genre with like the various kinds of destructible environments and what they how they interact with the players because there's the the one we have in the game right now is one that like rebuilds itself slowly and then there's they're supposedly adding another one eventually to the spider map tokyo friend sokyo maps that is gonna like when you destroy environments they're gonna like get stuck in the air on webs and stuff because of spider drones walking around and there's also all the team up moves that are like very iconic from comic books as like a genre maybe having i'm not saying that those things aren't good and won't make the game good and add to the genre i'm just saying that like the hook that has been missing has been less about whether or not the video game is good and just whether or not there's something to kind of like hook into your brain to like make you remember and distinguish it. Like if there That's... was another video game that was not Marvel that had the features that you had as well as it could while not being Marvel, right? Like it couldn't have the iconic scenes from movie part in it. But like I think it wouldn't be able it still wouldn't necessarily be able to have that same hook because like there was there was something very specific about like overwatch's marketing that also kind of ended up feeling like a missed opportunity yeah like they had like this narrative that apparently like and the animations from blizzard and yeah they, that's... they knew how to make cut scenes that people liked from all of their world of warcraft stuff i guess suppose yeah that's um, the and... the thing i think was that they pretended like they were going to have a story, and it was going to matter. And mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why I was thinking of like getting into Overwatch when it was first showing, because I was like, really, they really interested in it. the world and the characters, and then they, like, told, they were like, psych, we're, we don't care about that at all. But, they just made videos introducing characters that had been in the game since the beginning. For like the entire lifetime of the game. Yeah, exactly. And then, but with Marvel, their with their games like this, or like the the games that go on for a while and that you play online, like Marvel Heroes, it, 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 there's generally a story that matters. And even during the times where it feels like there isn't, they still find like comic book events to tie things into. So there's some sort of storytelling going on yeah i think having the the larger body of work to also carry right like that's the thing about overwatch is that they they sort of tease this larger continuity story setting but then like they had to actually build it all from the ground up whereas like marvel rivals can can do some of that but they can also just reference stuff that already exists and then there's a, already a wealth of narrative and story and character elements just there to build off of to kind of drive that same interest that people were kind of hoping to be satisfied with with early Overwatch. Yeah. Before we kind of realized that. And they are and already we got like... some comics. I I mean I'm sure there's stuff out there now that the games have been out for so long, but they they really missed like the peak of interest yeah. in it. Right. There may be I haven't looked into it recently and there, there may be a lot more stuff out there. But since it wasn't there when people were really interested in that, now the only people who are left are the people who are still around because they do like the video game or liked the video game enough to not want to give it up, even if they don't actually really like it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Blue, is Marvel Rivals going to be free to play? When it comes out? As far as I know, yeah. Want to play it together? Uh, yeah. If it, wait, does it have crossplay? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I feel it's... like we've moved away from crossplay for some reason. Like, we just stopped doing it. And I'm kind of sad, because it's caused a lot of problems for Game Cole specifically. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, Blue, you have a PS5, right? I do. Alright, yeah, that, there we go, we can play. Yeah. Is it not going to be on the computer? It is. It's coming like PC, PS5, and Xbox. I just don't know if that's crossplay. It it seems like one of those video games where they kind of want you to play it on the computer. If Overwatch is anything to go by, 
Well, I like, like having a controller. <laughs> even for the ones where you have to aim? Yeah. I mean, as much as I like... I mean, it's, I'm probably just going to be playing Spider-Man half the time, so I don't uh, really, so I don't really latest, have to aim most of, the, most of it. I just like The swinging. latest is that uh, Marvel Rivals will have cross-platform multiplayer at launch, Ooh. but they're not sure about cross-platform progression. That's fine. I just want to play with friends. Yeah. So we should be able to do that. We're gonna we're gonna go to to the world championship. <laughs> oh yeah, they're okay. adding the Olympics is gonna have esports eventually at some point <laughs> confirmed. I feel like well, I, I remember the last time we looked this up and it was like a bunch of phone games and it was like archery and it was just like. The equivalent of a flash game, <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> so I don't really trust their track well, record. If I'm being honest, it's supposed to be their first actual esports. Games. I want Tekken in the Olympics. Damn it! <laughs> How awesome I'm would that be? <laughs> be an Olympic rocket man. That's going to be great. Raccoon. Do, like, okay, if you really the... did do it seriously i suppose that could help like the the industry as a whole because there's yeah it feels like it's just sort of missing that seed and i don't know like i i i feel like east sometimes an esport will kind of catch into even like the gaming sphere of interest like i think overwatch did hit that for a bit where people were like maybe this can kind of like get things over the hump in terms of esports but even now like esports it, it it almost feels like you know esports need to like from different video games need to all come together to kind of justify a larger event right like you i feel like you don't have a world champion and maybe i'm wrong about this but i think that might also speak to sort of the presentation of the industry then but like you know you have like the world cup of soccer mm -hmm. right where they just play soccer. And I feel like with esports, the big event always has to be a bunch of games. Yeah, with Evo. Evo specifically. The one, just, right, like Evo. And even then, Evo. that's Evo. just Evo. fighting games. There's still esports for racing games. And then Call of Duty has its own thing. And like first person shooters. Oh and then goodness. MOBAs. And then so, it's like, it's too many genres. Imagine being friends with someone who's training to be an Olympic Mario Karter. <laughs> Olympic level Mario Kart, um, super ultimate. I I'll think, still take them. Yeah, that and <laughs> maybe putting Smash Bros in the Olympics will finally be the incentive to get Nintendo to just stop being so weird about it. <laughs> and to or somehow they'll hate it even more. Yeah, I feel like those are those are the two options. I don't know how this would happen. This would come to be, but some part of my gut feels that there is a future where. Someone says, like, hey, can we put Smash Brothers in the Olympics? And Nintendo is like, no, I don't want this. <laughs> but And you're like, why? And it's like, because someone might want to play a video game in a different way than we thought they should. <laughs> but that this begs the question, though. If esports are introduced to the Olympics, what will be the first game? Will it be a racing game? Will it be a shooter? Will it be a fighting game? What would it be? Uh, so um, part of it is like the answer is absolutely going to depend on the year, right? Like what's going on in video games. Well, it wasn't in this one, right? <laughs> it's we're, just we're, we're, Mario assume, and Sonic I, I at the Olympic Games. <laughs> right. So first you got to think about like it's going to be at least four years because I don't think they're going to start at the Winter Olympics. Obviously, <laughs> Street Fighter. Well, I mean, you can play it during the winter. <laughs> Saudi Arabia is to host the first Olympic esports games in 2025. So I guess oh, so it's they not... want to do it as like just a completely separate thing. Yeah, there's going to be Olympics somewhere in winter, and then also esports Olympics. I guess. Oh. Are they trying to have an Olympics every year now? Is that and they're like, well, we have to come up with some other category because then they have to come up with a fourth one. Then I'm, what's the fourth category then? Uh, mental games, mind games. 
Is there an Olympics game where you use a car in any capacity? I mean, I feel like does the luge count? <laughs> like an automobile. Don't they have like jet ski or something like that? Olympic monster truck. Maybe, yeah, maybe a jet ski. But not like racing, right? Like, right? So I like, I feel like there's not going to be, I, I feel like it would be weird to have a racing esport and not also be able to race cars, regular cars well, at the Olympics. Okay, wait. I feel like that would feel Well, weird. here's, here's the thing. I think the real reason like why they don't, they don't have like too many like vehicular stuff now is because it's like the Olympics are about peak human capabilities. Uh, so like when you introduce vehicles John, into it, what? John, that's not true. It's not true. Don't tell me about Simone that. Biles you know why? Is not human. Do you see? Do you know how many horses I have seen do all of the physical activity in a competition, John? And hedgehogs. <laughs> There's so many horse things. I know, but you still have a jockey There's like working his butt days off. Days <laughs> of it. There's still a person in the car. I know, but I'm just saying though. I'm, There's like, no in, in terms of the argument you are making. There is no difference between a horse and a car. They are right? from game those, people. Let them. us know in the comments. Races, <laughs> it, maybe they get the maybe the people get the medal, but in horse races, like just regular like triple crown, you know, when everybody like every couple of or few, probably not couple, every few. To several years, the pe- there's there's a group of people who only watch horses when one of them can win the really big trophy, the triple crown, right? That that's a, and it's always the horse, right? It's not the people; it's the horse. The people are just hired out to run the horse, and so cars are the same thing. Horses and cars are genetically very similar, actually. They call it horsepower because it's the same thing, just different numbers, John. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, what do you have to argue against that? Nothing. Uh, I can answer that question. I for do you. know that. It's I nothing. do know that all the equestrian events in the Olympics are involve actual like games horses that involve horses horses they involve horses. are not purely racing they involve like games like with a horse like polo or vaulting stuff like that no they have a they have competitions where they literally are just going through the woods and they put stuff in front of you like it's like oh you'd have to jump over a log if you were in the woods Did we just made it so there's several little logs so if you only jump over it a little bit you knock one of them off and you lose some points but there's ones that are just like a horse race through the woods. Hmm. This is what happens when you start so, arguing with about the Olympics with someone who's only watched on the horses. four of them <laughs> and but not has really followed. And I, mean, I mainly I just watched. Really followed it. I've just been exposed to the horses enough through various televisions around the city. And Mario and Sonic. <laughs> Joe is our resident and Mario horse and Sonic girl. at the Winter Olympic Games, which I did think I didn't. So I'm literally just headline, you know, headline reporting, right? Like I saw a headline and now I'm going to treat it as truth. But I saw a headline that was like super confirmed. No more Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Yeah, because uh, they don't have the um, the Olympics just like didn't give them the license anymore. Mm. So they didn't commission one <laughs> this. These this are year. our games now. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that series is probably canceled. Probably because they want to make, like, mobile games or whatnot instead that are licensed for the Olympics as a tie-in. I don't know. It's disappointing, but at the same time, it's, like, not really a big loss, in all honesty, because, well, they were fun when they came out, and they are great for kids to, like, especially to learn about the Olympics and whatnot. Who's really going to miss playing them? Yeah, I, I feel like the novelty is kind of wore, wear, wear, worn. The novelty has now worn off a bit of like, hey, it's Mario and Sonic in the same video game, but not in like a Smash Bros. way where there's a bunch of people. It's just them. Um, and like this kind of addressing of, and also like kind of the cultural idea, right? Like by the time the Wii came out, we had really come to terms, I feel like, as an industry with the fact that Sega, right, is not going to make consoles anymore. And, like, what does that mean for the Mario and Sonic rivalry? 
And I feel like, in a weird way, the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games were a, an answer to that question. Like, this somewhat amicable ability to collaborate, you know? Mm -hmm. And now that we have had that, and we've had how Sega has existed as it has, and, like, not in a, any... There's no there's nothing particularly charged about that, right? It's, it's, Sega has just continued to exist making video games. And now that it's not like as interesting of a proposition because people have played sonic video games on the switch and on the wii u and on the wii so it's not even though mario and sonic together is still kind of a unique thing it's still it doesn't have quite the same hold that it felt like it had culturally when it was they were first announcing like whoa mario and sonic are at the olympic games together mario and sonic in the same video game and we're, like, addressing the rivalry and all that. Um, so, yeah, I can sort of see why it is kind of leaving and why people are not that particularly disappointed. I also assume that the sales were not great by the end yeah, of wait, it. Yeah, wait, let me look those up. Hang on. For, like, for, what was it, Tokyo 2020? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was four years ago, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> I meant I don't even know if they made a Tokyo 2020. They did. Game. Like, you could have told me that they didn't. They did. And I would have believed you. It sold 900,000 units. This wow! Almost a million. Yeah, yeah, didn't sell that hot compared to other ones. And I also wonder, like, right, how much of the budget is the license, or is I don't know how it worked. Did they get paid to make the yes, video game, or did they pay for the license? They, they got paid to make the games. As far mm -hmm. as but far that's as still, I like in know. terms of the, in terms of the cost, right? Mm -hmm. Like getting three, like you have three different groups involved in that. I'm sure that adds like a lot of extra overhead for a game of that quality and for that level of sales, right? Like there's all this cross functional overhead of like brand image for each of these three different properties and then to sell less than a million units. Like, yeah, I think the I think the economics just doesn't work out on that. <laughs> also, this box art is horrible. <laughs> Well, it's a podcast, John, so <laughs> no one will have to know. <laughs> yeah, it's not like anyone has access to a browser at, at all times. <laughs> but you know what is in vogue, is doing well in its own way, not financially, very specifically, <laughs> but because it doesn't have to. Um, I feel like fan games have been on kind of a kick recently, an uptick kick. Uh, I don't know if you guys have felt this way. Um, obviously... Make a good Mega Man level three what? has captured all of our hearts. If you don't know, uh, you know, f uh, former Game Cola editor, also featured on the Space Quest Adventure Cast, Nathaniel Hoover was a big part of the development of this third entry in a series of fan game. Well, there's more. It gets weirdly complicated. Third numbered entry <laughs> in this series of fan games where people would submit levels in a sort of level creator and then they'd all get put together rated and reviewed and put together into a video game that then also ended up having a million bells and whistles added onto it that and james is like playing solitaire in this <laughs> in this mega man <laughs> fan game so like there's that um and then also things like uh recently i played a game called pokemon rogue which already itself was kind of a response to ROM hacks trying to, like, of various Pokemon games trying to come up with this idea of, like, how do you turn Pokemon into a roguelike game? Um, and this was, this is a browser based game. So you can just go to the website. Uh, I think it's pokerogue.net, but be yeah. careful that I think there's a lot of similar URLs that are posing as this. So don't make sure to make sure to find the right one. And basically, you just, you pick, you know, a set of starting Pokemon, you start with all the starters, and they're all worth three points, and you can't have more than ten points on your team to start out with, so, like, some of the legendaries are worth seven points or something, right? And the idea is, the, and then you, while you're playing the game, you can catch them and then add them to your list, and, like, if you catch a Pokemon with a certain nature, then it has access to that nature, so you'll catch multiple instances, and it'll take, like, the best IVs of each one, and the idea is to make it, I think, 200 encounters and so most of them are like wild pokemon and then mixed in with that are things like uh like trainer battles and a rival battle and fighting with like gym leaders sometimes or like kind of dynamax 
style fights where you can't just take it out in one hit necessarily. And um, it keeps building up that. Uh, and that was interesting. Like it was, it was a fun experience. I did beat it like the main thing. And then the idea is that you try to beat it with like different sets of Pokemon each time. And then there were different modes, but yeah. And then also I saw, and I haven't looked through all of this, but James mentioned it was like a someone, and I don't know all of the details. So uh, bear with me a little bit, but someone or some group of people put together like a, I, I don't know if it was Mario specific. I think it was Mario specific, but like a, E3 for Mario fan games sort of thing oh, where they announced like about this. A, a sequel to uh, Super Mario 63, which we talked about on the last <laughs> podcast, um, like an official big sequel. I think it's like Mario 127 or something like that, like one less than 128, okay. which is kind of a video game number and like had elements from like Galaxy and stuff. And I saw a couple other games from it, like uh, a fun like shy guy surfing. It looks kind of like taking a Flappy Bird-esque concept and, like, trying to build it out into a more complicated, in-depth game. Um, I don't know. Are there any other sort of fan game stuff that you guys have been into recently? Um, I, honestly, the, the one I've been doing was make a good Mega Man level 3. But we've already talked about that. We will play it eventually. Yes, we will. I, I I was kind of waiting because they keep coming out with patch updates. Um, and I want to kind of wait until we get like, especially because one of the upcoming ones might actually address some multiplayer changes, oh, okay. which might make our experience a little better. Um, so it's like on the radar for us to, to come together and do the multiplayer of that. Um, so I don't, we have not forgotten about it, but yeah, I mean, how far have you gotten through it, John? Um, not too, not too far. And honestly, like there was a one time we played with James and then, um, like the next day I put, I played a good amount of the levels after that. But on my own. But um, I, mean, I think I probably did like 10 of them. And out of the, what, 50,000 that are in there? 10 levels or 10 worlds? 10 levels. Okay. Yeah, I've done like two worlds, I think. I've done the two worst ones. Um, okay, good. Did you beat the worst level, John? Which one was that? The, whatever is at the bottom of the list. Uh, Not that I know of, no. I feel like you would remember. Probably, I probably did you would. start at the worst ones? No, I just did a bunch of random ones. Okay. It's rough. <laughs> <laughs> but I I beat that, so I feel like I could beat anything then. What about you, Blue? Any fan games? Does this conversation mean anything to you? I mean, I uh, posted in the Discord about Marvel Heroes uh, one year anniversary of bringing it back from the dead and all the progress that's making oh yeah like they it's like it wasn't it's an online it was an online mmo was it, yeah, it was like a, MMO? it was like marvel diablo basically yeah but with and so they're trying to sort of recreate it so like how does that work like are they trying to recreate the servers for all the people who still have the game uh is that the idea no it's uh you you'd have to have the game files but uh it's it is I forget exactly how, but it's an emulator of some sort. It it emulates maybe it's the server, um, but like the all the how everything worked and all the uh like behaviors and stuff were actually like both client side and server side, so which is not usually how that would happen. So instead of being, like, a completely online game, like most games like that would probably be built, it was more like, uh, it had, like, a single-player mode that just was never used in any official way. It was, like, built as single-player and then modified into multiplayer, which is not what anyone expected. <laughs> so is it, is it that you can now play it as like a single player game or or can you do multiplayer you can it? do multiplayer you can see each other on your screens and you can both like use your abilities and stuff and do combat but can i punch players i don't know <laughs> you never tried blue's not violent like that blue wouldn't just try to punch you in the face just to see i mean was there was possible. a pvp mode but i don't know if that's implemented at the moment probably not yeah as web 
like having web functionality is kind of the the biggest thing i think to like keep your game from having any sort of meaningful element of oh i can find a way to play it even if it's the servers are down especially if spider-man's in it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> like just the 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 online integration is probably the biggest hurdle to like emulation and stuff for yep. a lot of these games and luckily um, they just it's like almost a non-issue because it's not how it works apparently <laughs> dun, dun, dun. What? so that's neat all right that's fan games we've been playing but what about real video games pejorative or wait no non-pejorative no. implying a pejorative on the fan games for the sake of comedy in this particular turn of events uh-huh. yeah. i'm laughing because of the comedy thank you i appreciate it when people laugh when i perform comedy <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> anyway games i've been playing <laughs> now okay john that was too much that was sarcastic You're fired. blue was genuine blue was genuine in his praise and you were sarcastic and that's not acceptable uh, there's always. a difference between sarcastic and performative no there isn't anyway so <laughs> um yeah one game i've been playing actually joe this actually goes back to the topic you were talking about about pricing of video games um i've been playing a, a game that was shadow dropped out of the blue Called um, nobody wants to die. It was a PS. It was, it's true. <laughs> it is true. I don't. But um, it's on PS Five. I think it's also on PC. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a cyberpunk esque uh, first person detective game, where um, the main mechanic is that you have this device that reverses time, um, in like a virtual thing. So you basically use it to look at crime scenes and just put the whole crime together, like solving clue. Solving clues and, uh, you know. Solving clues? Yes, solving clues. Put, I've solved finding, this clue. Fo- finding clues and putting the whole story together. <laughs> this is but, uh, like Return of the Obra Din, I think is what it's called, right? Uh, is it similar so, to that? It is similar to that, but I'll be honest, you this game requires no thinking whatsoever. <laughs> mm. There's that no... seems like important for a puzzle game. Well, here's the thing: it's not a puzzle game. It is more of a narrative game. It, I see. It is story and world building through and through. And while the game, so the gameplay itself isn't really that interesting. It's more just walking over here, get get this clue. Walk over here, get this clue. Listen to the dialogue. Do this and do that. It's like it's very as a game. It's pretty hollow, but as an immersive like story. It's honestly incredible <laughs> the amount of world building that they do through the dialogue that and that makes it sound natural and not just like exposition being dumped on you. Uh, character interactions, the sound design, the the creativity of the setting itself, and like what and what's actually going on in this world. It's all fascinating stuff. It really is. For it's, if you're like. A big sci-fi nerd out there, and you want something like really cool and like kind of different for a sci-fi story. Definitely, like either play this game or at least watch it on YouTube if you can, because it is worth it. Um, but yeah, because the game is pretty hollow, though it's pretty short. Um, I haven't beaten it yet, but I probably will tonight. But the um, and it's on and going back to the price thing, it was twenty five dollars. And it looks incredible. It looks like a next gen like PS5 game, which I think they only did that. It became out like that because it's so short. Mm, I see. Yeah. So like, it very much like bang for your buck, time for your buck. Like really focus in on a high quality, quality over quantity in terms of like amount of things. Yeah. So buck. Up. Interesting. <laughs> Fork over those bucks you have. Don't get McDonald's tonight. Play Nobody Wants to Die. Out now. What about you, Blue? You played a video game? I played the murder of Sonic T. Hedgehog. (laughs) We did play that on stream. (laughs) Um, That was fun. I don't know, John, did you see that? Uh, I... I, I I didn't because I was at work, but the <laughs> um, but I did play the game. 
and I wrote the thing on it for the Game Cola Awards. Well, you didn't hear our funny voices then. Yeah, I know. We did I'm, excellent. I'm voice ashamed. Acting. I'm ashamed. Yeah, I'm sure it was amazing. It's all. It, it's too bad that there's no way for you to watch it now. I know when you couldn't live. I know if only there Jimmy. was a YouTube channel called GC. I know, I know Joe. Let I just call... see the word the, uh, the word net. I just called you, you Jenny. Could, I it because <laughs> I did a very good job. Were... We might do that again. Um, any yeah. Let anything me else, let me Blue? look at this this YouTube channel you talked about to see if there actually is something there because I feel like you're being <laughs> facetious. It's not like mm. there's a oh my god. <laughs> I can watch it right now on the YouTube channel. Oh, GC.net, the word G, the letters G, letter C, the word dot, the word net. <laughs> the word GC.net. Yeah. Uh, I, I've also been playing Marvel Rivals because that's in closed beta right now. And you're in the closed? Yeah, because I got far enough in the alpha. I see. Is it a secret? How secret is it? I, I, Define secret. <laughs> well, did you have to sign an NDA? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, because you did have to do that that one time. I did, that, or at least once. That's what that one time means. No, that, that that one time would mean only one time. But I've done it multiple times. But you just said once. I'm confused. You're contradicting yourself. And the podcast recording will vi- will vindicate me. Joe, he um, signed an NDA. He obviously can't talk about it. Take that. He can't talk about the NDAs he signed. Sometimes. Of course. So, like, what's the state of the closed beta? What, how are people feeling? What's the vibe? Uh, they added Jeff the Land Shark, so it is a 100 out of 10 game. It's perfect. There are no flaws. I see. I see. I see. But, like, before Jeff the Landshark got added, <laughs> what were the powers? Uh, they added Venom. I think that Which was Venom? before Jeff. The Eddie what, Brock one. What did they think about the video game and not the cast of characters that were added to the video game? Uh, it is similar to how it was, except it's improved. So... Do you have any specific details on the improvements? Uh, well, the, like, I was annoyed by when I'm a rocket raccoon main, and so I would be throwing healing at everyone all the time, because he's a support class in the game. He's got a little gun that shoots bouncy balls of healing everywhere, but... You didn't get enough indication of, like, when and how much you were healing people, but they fixed it, so there's uh, a lot of, a lot more feedback and indicators. Uh, just lots of, like, quality of life improvement stuff like that, and mechanically, gameplay-wise, it's mostly the same, but, it, like, uh, the experience is much better. Because of a lot of, they, they've been taking a lot of feedback. And that's great to see, because I gave it to them for a reason. <laughs> so, okay, aside from the breakable terrain and the cast of characters, like, what are the, like, the biggest differences between this game and Overwatch that you know of? I, I, don't, I, I don't really play Overwatch, so I don't know but exactly. Do you hear people talking about it? At all? The like uh, people who have played Overwatch? Well, as far as I know, they didn't announce Marvel Rivals 2 and then make every <laughs> single bit of it that was supposed to be worth making a new game for it obsolete by not doing it. This is true. So, they, they've they got that for them. They're not also, it's there. also not the like lowest rated game ever on Steam. So... <laughs> That's neat. Those are some differences, to be sure. Yes. Uh, there are... I think the Discord... The official Discord has 350,000 members. Which is a lot, apparently. I feel like though you have to compare it to other video games, though. 
Like what? What's a like? That's a big number, but like, how does that compare? Right? Because it's free to like join a Discord once and then never engage with it ever. Uh, yeah. There. I'm in too many. Oh, I'm in the <laughs> official DC Universe Online Discord, which that's a game that's been around for like over a decade, right? And on mm-hmm. all sorts of platforms, it has uh, less than twenty thousand members. I'm in the official. Um... Ace Attorney, like, courtrecords.net, like, Discord, and I have not set a character's worth of text in that entire thing. The only, okay, so Pokemon Infinite Fusion is a pretty big fan game that got a lot of attention for its unique premise and all the hard work that's gone into it. Mm-hmm. About and the, all the like, YouTube biggest... shorts where people are like, my viewers told me to fuse these two Pokemon. Whoa! Yeah, and it's the, the Pokemon the biggest thing ever. That one has a Discord community of less, just under 500,000. So I guess Marvel Rivals is like the second biggest Discord I'm in. Oh my god, I'm, st- <laughs> okay. I'm in the Game Ranks Discord? I never do this. <laughs> I never look in here. Oh my god, I'm getting. I'm leaving this one. <laughs> I don't know why I joined this. So it, it seems to be a lot of people from what I'm seeing, looking at every Discord I'm in. I see. Well, I wish you luck in your future Marvel Rivals endeavors at the Olympics. At the Olympics specifically, Joe. What have you been playing? Uh, I play Pokemon Rogue. That's pretty much it. Um, Thank you for joining the Game Global Podcast. To, I've been trying to decide whether to play, try to start Mega Man Battle Network 4 again, even though I really didn't like it, or uh, play Golden Sun, because that's Ooh. on the list of Game Boy Advance games. Um, oh, there's also Pokemon Mystery Dungeon that's back on Game Boy Advance, Nintendo Switch Online. That's a recent thing that happened. You should um, also play Infinite Fusion. Actually, Joe, that's a I, that's a good idea to have for to add to the end of a podcast like question. It's like, what game should I play next? What game should I play? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me in the the studio audience, but not Blue. He can't <laughs> refuse. <laughs> tell me in the studio audience what video game that I own already or is free that I should play next of the ones that I listed, or things that you might know that I own through like. The fact that I have Nintendo Switch Online and I, there are video games that I've not talked about on the podcast or I've not said that I have beaten on the podcast. Uh, tell me what to play and maybe I'll play it in time for the next podcast. Yeah. Which is, of course, what will happen after the end of this podcast where I tell you thank you for listening to this episode of the Game Cola podcast. If you like what you heard, please check us out on our actual internet website, Game Cola. .net, where you can find reviews, the award show, other funny articles that will make you laugh from the year 2010 or something like that. <laughs> There's a YouTube channel, gc.net, the letter G, the letter C, the word dot, the word net. We said it before. There's the stream that we did for the awards where we make funny voices with Sonic the Hedgehog and James continually encounters his least favorite style of dungeon in Breath of the Wild. Uh, not Breath of the Wild, but Tears of the Kingdom, the sequel <laughs> to Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Kingdom. I think we sometimes tweet, but not really anymore. But you could do that if you want. Um, I definitely don't since I deleted really, my Twitter. <laughs> the big thing, come to the Discord. Uh, if you, The links in video descriptions on uh, GameCola.net. You can find a link to the Discord. Come hang out with us. Tell me what video game to play. And you will have a grand good old time. Is there anything else you guys want to say? Thanks for listening. Go play Parasite Eve. It's great. Is there anything funny you guys want to say? Let's cancel Joe. Look, Jetty just showed up. And then that's where you put the outro music. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Well, you didn't say goodbye. I did. Yes, I did. Oh, okay, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> so it a you count. problem. Well, it depends if you're lying to me or not. I have it recorded on Audible video. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. And by that, I mean we'll hear about that, which means you'll be hearing from my lawyers. 